Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And for this video, I'll be showing y'all how to run Fallout 4 with copious amounts of mods. I've been getting a lot of comments asking me how I'm able to play Fallout 4 with 600 plus mods. Isn't there supposed to be a limit? And how is your game able to handle all those mods? Well, I'll be answering those questions in this video, and I'll be recommending some utility mods to use, and I'll show tutorials on how to set them up properly, so that your game can take on as many mods as possible. If you're like me, and you just can't get enough of those sweet Fallout 4 mods, then this video is definitely for you. So firstly, is there a limit to how many mods you can install? Well, it depends. If the mod comes with a plugin marked with an ESP file, then yes, you can only have so many of those. But if the mod doesn't have any plugins, such as a simple texture or audio replacer mod, then no, you'll be able to install as many non-plugin mods as you want. But that just won't do, because the mods that have ESP files are usually the bigger and more important ones. Sadly, you can only have 255 of these ESP files loaded at one time. If you try to load up your game with more than that, then it'll just crash on startup. So, if you're none the wiser, then you just have to suck it up and uninstall some mods to trade it in for others. However, there is a workaround to this. You see, there is an alternative plugin file type, which is the ESL. I don't know how everything works, I'll be honest, but apparently you can have up to 2048 ESL files. I don't see anyone ever hitting that limit, so you should be good. And yes, you can convert ESPs into ESLs, or at least flag them as such. If you use Vortex as your mod manager, then the process is actually super duper easy. All you have to do is go over to your plugins tab and look for any mods which have this little leaf icon. If it does, then that means it's eligible to be converted into a light plugin, which means the ESP file will be flagged as an ESL without actually changing anything. So yeah, just look over to the right side, scroll down and click mark as light. That's all there is to it. This specific ESP file is now marked as an ESL, and it won't count toward that 255 plugin limit. Go ahead and do this process for as many mods as you like. You shouldn't have any problems with your game in doing so. But if you do, then leave your findings in the comments below. If you're like me though, and use Mod Organizer 2, then the process to flag ESPs as ESLs is a bit more complex. But don't worry, I'll show you everything you need to do. For the rest of the video, I'll be covering everything in Mod Organizer 2, because that's what I use for modding. But Vortex users should be able to follow along just fine. And feel free to skip this segment if you've already used Vortex to flag your ESP files. Alright, for all those MO2 users out there, you'll first need Fallout 4 Edit. I'm hoping you already have it installed, but if not, don't worry. I'll show you how to do it real quick. So go ahead and navigate to the Fallout 4 Edit mod page, link in description, and then download it manually. Once it's done, put the zip file anywhere you'd like and extract it to a folder. I decided to put mine on the desktop. Then go to your newly unzipped folder and launch fallout4edit.exe. But after you do that, you can close out of the application. Now, since we're using Mod Organizer, we'll have to add Fallout 4 Edit as an executable to the manager itself. Look up and find the little gear icons and click on it. This is where you can modify and add executables. Click the plus to add a new executable and then give it a proper name. Then you'll have to click the three dots next to binary and tell MO2 where the exe is located. It's in the folder that we just made earlier. Once you got that, click apply and OK, and you're good to go. But that was just Fallout 4 Edit. Next up, you'll definitely want to download this handy tool called ESLify. It automatically flags ESP files as ESLs, so you don't have to worry about manually converting all of them. Again, you'll have to manually download this one and then extract the RAR file to a location of your choosing. Take all the files from the ESLify folder and drag them into the Fallout 4 Edit folder. Then, go back to Mod Organizer and add ESLify as its own executable. You'll want to select the r88eslfi.bat. Click Apply and OK, and that's all set up. Now, finally, we can launch the ESLify tool from Mod Organizer. When the command prompt shows up, type FO4 and then Enter. Then, Fallout 4 Edit will pop up using the ESLify script. Here is where you can select all the mods you'd like to flag as ESLs. 
If you've done this process before, then you may get a dialog box asking you to continue or revert the flagged ESPs back into normal ones. I'm going to click continue because I'm trying to flag my ESPs as ESLs. Once it's all done processing, it'll ask you again which mods you'd like to convert. Choose which mods you'd like, then click OK. After that, it should finish up rather quickly. And all I have to do now is simply close out of the application. As you can see here, I've got a lot of plugins. 462 to be exact. And that's well over the 255 plugin limit. But you see, half of those are ESL files, which don't count toward that limit. So without this handy tool, I'd be missing out on a lot of mods. Okay, so now that we're able to get past that 255 limit, the next issue we may run into is that our game just won't be able to keep up with all that heavy workload. If you're trying to play Fallout 4 with 500 plus mods without any upgrades to the engine, then your game will most likely be prone to crashes and infinite load screens. So, the answer to that is more mods, of course. What else would it be? No, but seriously, there's some great utility mods out there which are must-haves for anyone who plays Fallout 4, and especially for those who have large mod lists. The first one is Buff Out 4. Like the description suggests, it's like Buff Out, but for the engine. Don't ask me the details, it just makes the engine stronger, or something. But yeah, you'll definitely want to download this one. The install may be a bit confusing, because there's lots of requirements and such, but I'll walk you through it real quick. So first, you can go ahead and download Buff Out 4 directly to your mod manager, but make sure to get all those requirements like the mod says you should. I don't think I'll need to cover how to install the script extender. Everyone should have it at this point. Make sure to download the TBB redistributables manually. The address library can be downloaded to your manager, but the plugin loader should be done manually. And also, make sure to get the Microsoft Visual Studio executables both the times 86 and times 64. I don't know what this is supposed to do, but I'm just following what the mod page tells me. Once you get everything downloaded, run those executables and let them do their thing. As for the other files we downloaded, make sure to unzip those, then take the contents of those folders and then put them into the Fallout 4 folder, which is where the Fallout4.exe is located, not the data folder. Back in our mod manager here, make sure the address library is activated along with Buff Out 4, of course. Okay, now it's all properly installed. You should launch up your Fallout 4 to make sure it's all good though. To ensure Buff Out 4 is working, you'll have to go to your documents folder, My Games, Fallout, F4SE, and then look for the Buff Out 4 log. If the log is there, then it's working. This log is also used for crash reports, so you'll be able to find exactly what is messing up your game. Also, you may want to pull up the mods folder directly and look for the TOML file. This is where you can configure a bunch of settings. If you'd like, you can go ahead and copy what I've got here, or mess around with your own combination. Next up, we'll want another mod called Baka Scrap Heap. This one extends how much memory the game can use, so it's really useful if you're running a ton of mods which eat away at your RAM. The vanilla game only utilizes so much memory, and if you surpass it, your game may crash or your next loading screen will simply just never load. But with this mod, you won't have to worry about that anymore. As you can see, it's got some of those same requirements as Buff Out 4, but we already installed those. So all you have to do here is install the main file directly to your mod manager. Once it's installed, you're all good to go but there is one change you may want to make. Open up the file location for the mod and then locate the TOML file. Here is where you can configure a couple of settings. The one you may want to change is the scrap heap multiplier. By default, it'll be set to two, but you can go all the way up to four if you're running a super heavy mod order like me. It is considered experimental, so be wary of any issues. For me, I notice after setting it to 4, I no longer have any issues related to infinite load screens, which is an absolute blessing. So yeah, go ahead and make the change if you'd like, just make sure to save before you close out. Okay, just one more mod to go here. The last one we'll need is called High FPS Physics Fix. Vanilla Fallout 4 has an interesting quirk, that is the game's speed is tied to the frame rate. So if you're playing at 200 FPS, then you'll be running around at light speed. But this mod here fixes all of that. I don't know how, but it breaks that tie between the engine and the frame rate. What's really neat about this mod is that it'll also speed up your loading times. Like I said, the game speed is tied to the frame rate, and that includes loading screens. So, if you're able to have the loading screens at 200 to 300 FPS, then your game will also load substantially quicker than normal. And that's really helpful to know if you have tons of mods which gradually make your load times slower. 
But again, this mod fixes that, and it's easily a must-have. If you'd like, you can also go directly into the mods folder and edit some settings to your liking. You may want to change disable black loading screens and disable animation loading screen to true, which will speed up your load times even further. Personally, I don't like disabling the loading screen animations because it just makes your loading screens look like they're frozen, but hey, it just might speed up your loading times by a few seconds if you really need it. Alright, so finally, after all of that, our games should be running perfectly smooth with absolutely no issues whatsoever, hopefully. I still have some issues here and there, but I can say with confidence that after installing all of these mods, my game has been more stable than ever, and it honestly surprises me that I can run 600 mods with hardly any crashes. I'm still trying my best to iron out other issues such as micro stutters and FPS drops in downtown, but at this point, I've come to accept the fate that Fallout 4 is just a horribly optimized game, and I question every day as to why I play it. Well, actually, I know the answer. It's because of all the awesome mods. But anyway, the only other issue I have with my game is script lag. So here's a word of warning for y'all. Watch out for those script-heavy mods, such as Sim Settlements. If you have too many scripts running at one time, it'll really lag your game. And there's just not much you can do about it. If anyone knows how to remedy that, then please let me know. I may have lots of experience with modding, but I am by no means a master. Nonetheless, I hope you all found this tutorial helpful and are looking forward to playing a heavily modded game with minimal issues. If you liked the video and found it helpful, then make sure to overload that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. So it's really useful if you're running a ton of mods which eat a- fucking hell. This specific ESP file is now marked as an ESL and it won't count toward that 200- FUCK!